Hey guys, what's going on? Bobby here, and today we have, for the very first time on our channel, a tier list video. So what we're going to do today is we have a great site over here called tiermaker.com. Uh, we have our Brawl Stars template out here, and we're going to start from D, get all the way up to SS, and we're going to rank every brawler overall. Now, I am new to this type of video. I haven't done anything like this before, so let me know if your thoughts. Let me know if you guys like these types of videos, and I'll continue doing it. Now, we're going to be in voice chat with Toma while doing this. Many of you guys are very familiar with Toma. He's on the channel a good amount. He's really helping out a lot behind the scenes. So, with that being said, let's get Toma into the call. Ja. Ja. All right, so we're in VC with Toma now. What's up, Toma? Uh, not much. Hola. Hola, Toma. Okay. <laughs> So we're going to start off, we're going to start off with D, and for the first brawler in D, I'm going to put in Rico. Now, um, the reason I'm putting Rico here is because I just think he doesn't really have a mode at all where he's even average in. I think he's good in a couple baps here and there, but outside of that, I don't think Rico excels anywhere. Uh, what do you think, Toma? I actually quite like Rico with his bounces. He's not really viable, but he's one of my favorite brawlers to use, but D tier is fair, I'd say. For sure. I mean, he's a fun brawler to use. He's one of my favorites, but he just, there's nowhere really where he's best in a map, and there's nowhere even where he's like top three in a map. You really have yeah, to that, try that, and go out of your element same, with Rico. That's like the same thing with Mortis. I'd put Mortis in D2. Yeah, one exactly. One of my favorite brawlers, but mm -hmm. not really viable anywhere. Exactly. We're going to put Mortis here again. You know, before he might have been a little bit higher, somewhere in the middle, just because he was so good at Brawl Ball. And I wouldn't say weak at other modes, but he wasn't really in the meta in many other modes. He's just bottom we'll everywhere. Bounty a little bit when there was a ranged meta, but now Bounty's become more like Carl and then like tankier brawlers. Exactly. It, it seems awesome. like all the good brawlers kind of counter him, and then obviously all the tanks counter him. And talking about tanks, what we're going to do is we're going to put Primo over here. Now, with Primo, I find it really interesting because if you think about it, Primo and Rosa are both tanks, obviously, but A, Primo's shots are harder to hit, B, he has less range than Rosa, and C, he does less damage than Rosa. So I don't know how you're going to have him have less of every single stat. Like, that's that's just not a balanced brawler. That's not how balancing should work, in my opinion. And that's why I'm going to give him a D here. Mm -hmm. Rosa also has is easier to get her super. And her super is much more rewarding than Primo's, as you can just gain, like, invincibility. Exactly. So, to continue with D, we're going to put Piper over here. Now, before, I would say Piper would be a B or a C, just because, obviously, she's not very playable in modes like Heist. Brawl Ball. She's playable in a couple gem grab maps, but she used to have Bounty. Bounty used to be her thing, but the new Bounty maps are kind of gearing towards more of a control type meta than a ranged meta, and you're seeing less and less of Piper in her own mode. Now, although she's still a good pick in Bounty, that's basically the only place in which you can play her, and that's why we're going to give her the D ranking. Toma, would you like to pick the next one? For my Brawler, I'm going to have to go with Shelly, but I'm not going to put her in the D tier. I think she goes in C, because originally I would put her in D, but with Rosa being added to the game, we're seeing a lot more of Shelly being a really viable counter to Rosa, and she deserves to be upgraded as well. Exactly. So before, you know, Shelly wasn't really too good anywhere, except she was kind of like an average pick in, in Brawl Ball, but now with the surge of Rosa being so dominant everywhere, Shelly's that number one counter. So you're seeing Shelly... In some gem grab maps you wouldn't see or even seeing Shelly and Bounty now just to counter that Rosa. So that's why we're going to give her that C spot today. Um, to continue, we're going to go with the other shotgunner in the game. We're going to go with Bull. Now the reason we're going to go with Bull is because, you know, he's just an absolute beast in some heist maps. Like he can totally just take over in heist, but outside of that he doesn't do much. Now I wouldn't give him a C spot. I almost gave him a D, but I feel like he just does so much work in some of the heist maps that we have to appreciate him and we have to give him that C spot. Yeah, there's nowhere else Bull can really do much other than Heist, but in Heist he really does excel. To continue with the C tier, we're going to go with Tara. Now, Tara used to be one of the most meta brawlers. She used to be really good in gem grab, she used to be really good. Even people were playing her in Heist, obviously she's an absolute beast in Brawl Ball. She didn't really get a nerf, but you saw a lot of other people that counter her get a buff. So you're going to see her a little bit out of the meta. The, the modes she's good in, other brawlers that are good, that are decent in those modes just completely took over. And I feel like although, you yes, you can make Tara work, there's just a lot better options everywhere. And the only place she's really average in now is Bravo. Thus, we're going to give her that C. Mm -hmm. And with Gene being in the game, he's like a superior version to Terra. Maybe you're like, oh, but Terra can pull in three people at once. Well, people are becoming much more aware. They're starting to like spread out more. You're not necessarily seeing teams sticking together anymore because... For Brawl Ball, it's a lot of control-based team comps. You want to have full control of the map. You don't want to be stuck in one corner. 
and that's why Jean is so superior to Terra. Exactly. A lot of the teams are becoming much more aware. Before I used to be able to get triple pulls, even double pulls all the time, but now you're not seeing. You're seeing Tara being used a lot just to get that single pull, get people, kill them, but that's not what Tara is good for, especially since it takes a while to get her super, so we're going to give her that C. Now to continue with the C, we're going to put Crow over here. Now Crow did get a tiny, tiny bit of a buff, and the Pam nerf did make him a little bit more viable. But unfortunately, he's only kind of decent in Heist. I guess you can say he's also decent in, uh, in Brawl Ball, but he doesn't really excel there too much. So we're just going to give him that C. I feel like he's the closest Brawler in the C class to a B, but we just need to see a little bit more of a buff in order to move him up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would have put him D tier before this past balance changes, but no, he does deserve the C spot. So to continue with C, our very last pick for this column is going to be Dynamite. Now the reason we're going to put Dynamite here is because he's just an incredibly high skill cap brawler. He's super hard to use for the average person, even for the average pro, a lot of them can't use Dynamite. Now I for one, I really enjoyed Dynamite since the game came out, so I've taken the time to become decently good at him. And there's a handful of people that can really, really control a game with Dynamite. But again, you're basically only seeing him in Heist. You'll see him a couple times in a few Siege maps somewhere. But that's if a lot of other options just aren't on the table. And just overall, his star power isn't that good. Although it can lead to some cool plays and can get you out of some situations, it's basically never used um, unless you're like jumping over a wall in Heist. So that's why we're going to put Dynamite at C. <laughs> I rarely ever see Dynamite. You can really just walk up to the Dynamite and just juke all of his shots without like even needing to attack him because exactly. he's not going to do anything. Exactly. He's super, super easy to juke and that's how we're going to put him in that C spot. So to start off with B, this is going to be our worst brawler in B. He barely made it and a lot of people actually might disagree with this, but we're going to put Bo at B. Now the reason we put Bo over here is because although he's not super strong anywhere, he's actually fairly, fairly average in just about every single mode in the game. Now, he's used in Bounty a good amount, you're seeing him in Brawl Ball a good amount now, Gem Grab, he's a very viable mid, and people are even using him as lanes now. You're even seeing, like, you're, you're really seeing him everywhere. And although he doesn't really excel, although his stats aren't too good, he gets countered by nothing. His supers are really good, very good for the meta, the current control-based meta. He's just super, super strong, but at the same time, he's not overpowered in any way. And I think this is an example of a perfectly balanced brawler in Brawl Stars. Yeah, I actually think Bo is being slept on. With the buff he got last update, he can now do over 2,000 damage with free attacks, which is amazing because you can like two hit, three hit most brawlers that you couldn't anymore. Exactly. That you couldn't have before. Exactly. He's basically a Shelly at close range now. With the uh, with his attack, his attack does like 200 less damage than Shelly right beside someone if you're hitting all three of his bows. So he's definitely super strong and definitely slept on. Rolling into the B tier will be Daryl. Now his attack isn't that strong as his health is pretty low for a tank, but he has a star power with his super, which allows him to get like a shield of what 50%? I think it's I think it is 50%, maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, and he serves as a great assassin to single out enemies such as Nita, Crow, Throwers, Long Range Brawlers, all like squishy brawlers and mid range brawlers. Daryl can just use a super, roll on them, and get like a free kill if they're alone. He's a great brawler and he can turn a tough 3v3 into a 2v3. Yeah, just like what Crow used to be in the old meta where Crow would basically jump on someone and turn the game into a 2v3, that's basically Daryl's job right now. As you guys can see in a lot of my recent videos actually, especially in the competitive ones, we're using Daryl a lot in Heist just because we're waiting until that Daryl can get his super and then we can just have him roll on literally anybody they have. He's super good. If he can bump somebody with his roll and get them stunned, that's basically all you need and the Daryl's going to be able to turn that 3v3 into a 3v2 and lead you guys to having control. Now onto our next B brawler, we're going to be going with Colt. Now Colt is a personal favorite of a lot of people. Myself, I ex I just I love playing Colt. He's so fun. I'm not that good at him. He's probably one of my weaker brawlers, but I absolutely love playing Colt. You can dominate so many games if you're a good Colt. Just take Johnny Boy for example. Shout out to him being the OG original god Colt. Um like, as you can see, he's just insane. You can team wipe with the Colt. His DPS is through the roof. I'm pretty sure he has the highest DPS in the game outside of, like, a Rage Star Power Bull. But he's super good in Siege when you have pushes or on defense. 
Obviously, he's super good in any open map on Heist, on Brawl Ball. Even on Gem Grab, he can be used as a mid because his DPS is so absolutely insane. And obviously, his uh, his super can break walls, and that could lead to a lot of things. Breaking walls is a really, really slept on ability for a brawler to have because you can totally change up the map to make it how you want. So for example, in a closed map, if you have Colt, you can break all the walls, make it open, and that makes Colt a lot stronger. So a lot of these things that you don't think about, you really have to have in the back of your mind when you play. Toma, do you have anything to add on to mm -hmm. Colt? Yeah, no. Colt is definitely one of my favorite brawlers. Besides Shelly, he's like the only brawler I play, really. And the, the fact that he's high skill gap makes him even more fun for me because it's just it's so satisfying to get kills with him and his high DPS leads to so many great moments with him. Now our second tank in the B column, we're gonna have Frank over here. Now the reason we have Frank over here is because obviously he's a beast in Brawl Ball, you guys know he's like a top three brawler there. You can absolutely dominate a game with him, but because he's also decently well in other game modes. Now sprawlers like Piper for example where you have one mode where you're pretty good in such as Bounty but then you're absolutely useless everywhere else, it's not like that for Frank. You can use Frank in a couple heist maps, you can use Frank in a couple gem grab maps and he's even viable in some Bounty maps. So although Frank isn't very popular everywhere, you can definitely use him in a lot of environments and in a lot of different maps and he can become useful for you guys. Yeah, just the pressure of having Frank super is like an amazing thing for your team as it just pressures the enemy back and you can get on a really offensive stance. To finish off the B column, we're gonna go with the homie Poco. Now the reason Poco is here is actually pretty obvious. Now before this meta, I'd put Poco as a C or maybe even a D just because he's a mid in gem grab, that's where he's mainly used. And there is so many better mids that we're gonna talk about later. But the emergence of Rosa and the po very, very annoyingly popular strat of having a Poco alongside a Rosa, we're gonna give Ro we're gonna give Poco that B solely because of that. It's probably the best uh, best strategy in the game right now. Literally on every mode, you can just throw a Poco, throw a Poco, uh, a Rosa there, and you're gonna be totally fine. It's just so so strong, and obviously without the Poco, that wouldn't be able to happen. So we're gonna be generous to Poco. And we're gonna put him in that B column. Yeah, Poco's always been pretty underwhelming, but now that Rosa's a thing, like, it's just an unstoppable combo, and he just definitely deserves to be moved up a spot. Contrary to what I just said, I actually changed my mind, and there is someone else that we're going to put into the B column. So after talking about it a little bit with Toma, we decided that Jesse does deserve that spot in the B column. Now, I was going to give it an A originally, but if you really think about it, Jesse used to be super strong, but now there's a good amount of things that not only counter her, but kind of just make her irrelevant. Now, uh, you have the emergence of brawlers like Carl and Jean, which are just better control versions of Jesse. Not, not because they have a turret or anything like that, but they can just hold down a lot easier than Jesse can. Jesse's shot doesn't actually do that much, and she doesn't really have that much health. Her shot is also pretty slow, so it's super easy to juke. But the fact that she has her turret is always going to make her a super good brawler if there's ever any type of control meta. Now, again, it's sad to see Jesse here because I really wanted to put her in that A category, but I think if you're able to take out that turret, Jesse's just not strong enough to put her in those top three columns. Mm -hmm, yeah, Jesse may seem OP at first as she can constantly heal her turret with her star power, but honestly, once you get rid of that turret, she becomes almost useless. And as we mentioned of Terra, teams are becoming more aware, they're spreading out more, and she won't find those bounces as much. Now to start off the A column, we're going to go with the homie Brock. Now the reason we're going to go with Brock is, honestly, I almost gave him an S. Now he's probably the most under- he's probably been the most underrated brawler for the past six months of Brawl Stars. Nobody ever ranks him high, and it, it bothers me a lot because I feel like everyone sleeps on Bounty. Brock is probably the most used brawler in Bounty. He's good everywhere on every map in Bounty. Now Piper can't be used because Piper is all range, nothing up close, but Brock is really, really versatile. You can use him anywhere. Brock's played on Brawl Ball, Brock's played on Gem Grab. You see Brock on Heist a lot, obviously Bounty I spoke about. And Siege, Brock is a killer. Brock is super, super good as for in Siege, as you guys have known, if you're watching my videos, and I'm sure a ton of other YouTubers say it as well, if you can break those walls before the Siege robot gets to the Ike, you can do like 30% more every single push. And Brock having the ability to break those walls from afar just leads to such big pushes and just he dominates there. And in so many maps, in competitive settings, for example, you're gonna see Brock ban just because teams don't wanna be pushed in one robot. And again, as I've said, super good in bounty and can be played in every single mode. That's why we're gonna give Brock the A. 
Yeah, Brock seems like he's just a long range brawler, but he can really serve up close when you spam auto aim. You do a big burst of like 4,500 damage, which is enough to kill like half the brawlers in the game. And he's really good on mid range too, as it takes a little bit of skill to hit his shots, but the reward is just immense. Something we also didn't add on is Brock has explosive damage and his shots are already pretty thick. So, like, if you compare him to Piper, Piper's shot probably covers like a third of a tile, as where Brock's shot probably covers half of a tile, and on top of that has that explosive damage. So even if you're not necessarily hit by that rocket, it's still going to have that explosive damage and still hurt you for the full amount. And that's part of what makes Brock so, so dangerous. His star power is also great for area denial, which further reinforces the control meta that we're seeing right now, and it just makes him more viable. To continue with this kind of decent and everywhere type of flow that we have going with Brock, I'm going to slide in my girl Penny. Now Penny obviously as you guys know is really really versatile and in my opinion has the best or second best spawnable after Nita with that bear. And the, like the mortar is just absolutely insane. Uh, Penny's shot doesn't actually do too much damage but the fact that when you hit someone coins or I guess if you if you have vegan Penny you have those, uh, those carrots go through her. Um, th that, those being able to hit the other people as well leads to a lot of damage and actually helps charge the super a ton. This is the super is probably the most annoying thing in the game just because you can't juke. If you go back and forth, you're going to be hit for an extra 1680 if you have that maxed out penny. And it's just ridiculous having to deal with it. Penny's super good in siege, she's a good mid and gem grab. Bounty she's used in, you can see her a little bit in heist, but honestly, not that much. And in Brawl Ball, even you see her in a couple maps. And this is why we're going to give Penny the A. Yeah, I don't like Penny that much, but when I face her, it's always a tough match. And she definitely deserves the A spot. Who the sus? Who the sus? Who, <laughs> <laughs> Who the sus? To continue the A, we're going to go from the most elite brawler in the previous meta to kind of a middle tier one over here. We're going to go with my girl Pam. Now Pam, thick Pam at that actually, is obviously a super good brawler. But I don't think she really excels anywhere anymore. I think everywhere there's a better option than Pam. And although Pam is really easy to use and decent everywhere, I just find there to be a better option everywhere. So we're going to give her that A spot. Now Pam is good almost in every mode. I'm going to give her kind of a D or C ranking in Heist. But outside of that, I feel like she's a B or, a, or an A just about everywhere. Just because of how kind of versatile she is. She can really do anything. You can mid, you can lane with her, you can go on the side with her. You can do a lot of damage from up close. You can chip away from back far. Pam is super good and super versatile, so we're going to give her this spot at A. Yeah, Pam's always just been super dominant as a mid, and with her recent nerfs, I feel like she doesn't dominate the meta as much anymore. To continue this A tier, we're going to go with Spike. Now, I feel like Spike has always been a top 10 brawler in the game, at least top 10 that is. Spike is always super good, you know, just the fact that he can do so much damage and his shots go so far, and on top of that, you have... Not really called RNGs anymore, but I'm just going to call them them. Like those little spike things that come out of the sides. He has those, which doesn't allow brawlers to heal up. It's it's just super, super good. And just the make of his brawler is always going to have him as a top uh, as a top 10 type of brawler. His super also, which it can help self-heal you if you want it or hurt others. Or if you're in it with the others, do both at the same time. Is super, super dominant. So Spike is basically always going to have this A tier no matter what meta it is. And to be honest, a lot of these top brawlers counter Spike, but even then, Spike is just super, super good and counters too many brawlers for you to ignore and take out of the top 10. The second last brawler we're going to have in the A category is going to be Nita. Now, I love Nita. I absolutely adore Nita. I think she's always been a top brawler in the game and similar to Spike, just the kind of make of her brawler is what makes her so good. But I think she is the definition of a control brawler. Now, Nita doesn't get countered by anything in the game unless you don't have your bear and you're facing a Spike, which we just talked about because Spike just simply outranges Nita and can do a ton of damage and take her down. But outside of that, nobody can really, Nita can block about 40% of the shots with her bear and just walk up to brawlers that she gets those blocks on and get an easy kill Or if you do a little bit of juking you can just get up close to her or if you're facing a tank You can just stay far enough where you can hit the shots and they can't there's just always a way you can win with Nita And that's why I love this brawler and that's why she's always going to be somewhere towards the top for us the A tier today just because she's super good and can win in every single situation if you play her correctly. There's yeah, on top of what Bob said, Nita can actually win a lane by herself with her bear. Once you get your super, you throw the bear behind the opponent, 
and then they get pinched between you and the bear and they have to choose to go one way or another and it's just like a free kill most of the time exactly so what thomas said you see a lot of pinching especially in competitive brawl stars where another brawler will come over to your lane and help you win it just so you can get that clear path and have that path for yourself you don't really need that with Nita because if you put the bear in, the, in a correct position, you can just have your bear and yourself do the pinching and it's just a pretty easy lane win. And shout out to Jack for being an amazing Nita. If you guys are up to date with the channel, you guys see all the amazing, amazing plays Jack makes and just learn from that. He knows the situations properly and that's why you can see him being totally unstoppable with this brawler. To round off the A tier, and this brawler is the closest one definitely to an S and was an SS at one point. He's kind of taken a bit of a hit, but I feel like people are kind of underrating him right now. We got Leon. Now, Leon is super, super good with a sneak ability. Uh, even two days ago, we saw OG go 9-0 in a siege game just by using Leon and absolutely dominating. I still feel like a really good Leon is able to completely annihilate just about anything. Like, if you, if you have good IQ with the Leon, people won't know where you are and you can get right up to them with three burst shots to do 22,800 damage. You're able to take out absolutely every brawler if you play Leon correctly. And that's why we're going to leave a, uh, Leon at the A tier. Also, just to add on to that, he's good in every single mode basically outside of Heist, even though he is still usable in Heist. He's not really that good there. He excels everywhere else basically and that is why we're going to give him that A. The weakest out of the three brawlers we're going to put into the S is going to be my boy Barley. Now, Barley was very, very close to an A. And my, when I mean very, like, I, I almost put him into the A. I probably did put him into the A, and I had to drag him back out and put him to the S. But we have him over here. Now, Barley, just like Nita, is, like, basically the definition of a control brawler. Just constant lobbing over walls. And unlike his friend Mike over here in the C column, it's super, super easy to use Barley. You can just auto aim most of your shots, and to be honest, you're gonna hit most of them. Uh, his super is the best control super in the game. You, you can't cross a huge, huge area because of it. And he, you just see him all the time in Heist, in Siege, in Gem Grab, even in Bounty, even in Brawl Ball now, you're starting to see him a little bit more. He's just insane, and he can take out those things like turrets, and bears from over a wall where you don't have to get hit by them and that's why we're going to give him the S. I have nothing else to add on to what Bobby said. I don't use Barley much myself so I wouldn't know but I hate facing Barley. Now to continue the S we're going to have my boy Carl. Now Carl which impacts Pam being here, impacts Spike being here and is the only decent counter to Nita is going to be put into the S column. I think he's the third, uh, the third strongest brawler in the game He's good every map, every mode. You can't go wrong with Carl because nothing counters him. He's good against 1 through 24, every single brawler in the game. And you're just going to see him dominate in competitive at low cups, even in showdown, which we haven't talked about outside of Leon. You're going to see him dominate there too. There's just nowhere that you can go wrong with Carl, and that's why we're going to give him the S. Mm -hmm. I know Carl's a pretty higher skill gap brawler than the others. Not that great at him, but I've seen multiple players that are just insane with Carl and they just clutch up games and win games for their team. Now going on to the final S Brawler, and I really, really, really wanted to give it SS because I do think it's beyond both of these S Brawlers, but nothing can compare to what we have on the SS, so we're gonna have to leave him at S. We have my boy, Gene. Now Gene is one of the most, if not the most common competitive Brawler in the game for the reason that he's not really weak anywhere. He has a huge, huge winning play, such as Tara, which we have in the C, but the reason we have uh, Tara in C and Jean in the S is A, because Jean's super I think is actually way easier to hit than Tara's in a matter where you can flip the game, as well as the fact as it's way easier to charge. Tara, you're gonna spend basically half the game just losing a lane, charging a super, just to have one attempt at winning it all. Where Jean, you're gonna see yourself getting three, four, five, or even six supers in one game, and having so many opportunities to change the game and win it for your team. There's no doubt that he's the second best brawler in the game. Yeah, in gem grab, you can sit at your spawn the whole game, and then if you have that gene pull, you can pull their mid and just win the game just like that. So he definitely is a game changer, probably the mo most OP like win condition. Other than the last brawler, who would have guessed? Shelly. Shelly has crazy damage and crazy read. Her super is crazy. She can team wipe just with a button. You don't even need skill to use her. You just click a button and you win. Her star power is crazy as you can slow down everyone just so your team can push up and maybe get some free hits. And she's just that OP if you're uh, uh, like 200 trophies. The real SS tier brawler is actually Rosa. 
as you guys all know. She's just so overpowered, she can win the game for your team. If you don't have a Rosa on your team, chances are you're going to lose if you face another team that has a Rosa. And we've never seen a brawler this strong create a meta around her. Yeah, just to piggyback off of what Toma said, there, there's nothing that I can say about Rosa that will justify just how dominant she is. Just her being a brawler has lifted brawlers such as Poco and brawlers such as Shelly above the rank that they have to be in. Rosa, just like the old Pam, but to a way bigger degree, is honestly just the best brawler in every map, in every single mode. There's just no way you can stop a Rosa. You, you, you see people 3v1ing without taking a thousand HP with Rosa. Rosa's just the absolute best brawler, 100% hands down, probably of all time. And hopefully we're going to see a major, major nerf to what she is right now. That's going to wrap it up for today, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video. I was actually inspired by, I was just like kind of scrolling through my YouTube channel feed. And I saw a lot of tier lists, but I'm seeing a lot of names who are like 10,000, 11,000, 12,000 trophies who've never pushed or played competitive. And I was just like, well, why would I listen to these guys? Because like their opinions on the top brawlers don't really matter. I don't think it's right most of the time. I actually think a lot of the big YouTubers are way, way off outside of Coach Corey and Ash when it comes to their tier list. So this is why I decided to make one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't, just let me know in the comments. Just say, I don't want to really see these type of videos. I want to see gameplay and I'll just get, I'll just step away from this type of videos and just stick to the pro gameplay and to what I've been doing already. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. Shout out to Toma for being behind the scenes constantly with this YouTube channel. He helps out a ton and without him, I definitely wouldn't be able to run this channel. So huge props to him. But anyways, I hope you guys like this video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.